morning everybody uh, I'm a little bit later today Fridays I usually try to sleep a tad bit longer because the traffic jams are sooner so it makes sense to go earlier to work, uh, later to work than usual well but I'm not talking about my work here I want to talk about uh, on my way to work I want to talk about uh, selection European Soccer Player of the Year, as well as a little bit Europa League, uh, where we have to draw in the afternoon, early afternoon uh, here in Europe. Yes, and of course again, and I will soon stop commenting about it, but at the moment it is just 13 degrees here, and that's upper 50s for my American subscribers, uh, so of course I'm wearing a hockey jersey because they're just more comfortable in such not cold but cooler weather to wear. And yeah, well, probably I'll talk a lot more about soccer, but at one point I will branch a little bit out into my other sports that I like because I'm a, I'm a soccer nut first, but I'm a sports nut second. So, uh, soccer is by far not the only thing I'm watching. So, Luka Modric well deservedly wins Europeans Soccer Player of the Year. Uh, and I'm super excited about this choice. I think of all the players, I think Salah probably had a little bit of a case for himself because he really had an outstanding season but then in the end uh, Liverpool didn't really win anything so uh, I think Modric not only uh, winning a Champions League uh, being a vital part of the Real Madrid team I mean he's the glue uh, of the team uh, not don't yeah maybe even the creative mind uh, he's not a classic playmaker in uh, the longer likes of Zidane, but a little bit more understated, but a really outstanding, great player. And then at the World Cup, uh, there is a reason why he won the play of the tournament. Uh, could have gone a few other ways, but I think Modric uh, is definitely a good choice. And yeah, I'm in a way happy that we don't have Messi or Ronaldo. If Ronaldo would have, would have won it, then uh, this would have been a shame. Of course, there's still the uh, golden ball to be given out uh, by FIFA. I think that's towards the end of the year and there I'm a little bit more wise. But, uh, yeah, I'm a little bit more afraid about that one. That it will go to Messi and Ronaldo because that's really an award that is so much uh, seemingly affected by interests so you wanna have a big name player but yeah Modric had probably the season of his life and therefore I'm very happy that he was chosen as the football of the year um, Ronaldo had a better season than let's say two years ago when he won the Euros and uh, the Champions League uh, but I wouldn't have found it fitting, uh, considering everything. So yeah, that's that. Uh, on a side note, uh, speaking of Ronaldo, um, I honestly don't... Uh, he won the goal of the year for his great goal against Juventus. I still argue that Bale's goal in the Champions League final wasn't even in consideration for, Euro for European goal of the year. It was a better goal. We can argue a uh, long time it's about that, but to me, it seemed weird that Bale's goal was not even under consideration. Uh, it was the winning goal in that final. It was an absolute screamer. Ronaldo's goal, too. Don't get me wrong. Ronaldo's goal was absolute was a wonderful goal. Yeah, but I think not having Bale's goal there just doesn't seem right. And I'm curious for the Pushkash award uh, whether they will put both goals up there or not. I honestly think they should. So, but yeah, that's to be seen. 
So, and then a little bit Europa League. Uh, yeah, I think almost all, there were not too many surprises, except probably for Dudelange from Luxembourg, who won against Cluj. Uh, they won the home game 2-0, then they got ahead 3-0, and it was a 3-2 then, so um, surprising. But yeah, for such a small team from Luxembourg making it to the group stage, I think that's great. Uh, I also saw that probably all the bigger names that you would expect qualified. Uh, I saw Bordeaux, I saw uh, Sevilla. I uh, was a little bit surprised that Sevilla had to go through qualification, uh, went through. Then, yeah, Besiktas. Nothing really exciting, and yeah, there was then the one game that I think Leipzig uh, had a big scare against Luhansk from Ukraine, uh, where uh, they had a 0-0, and never underestimate a 0-0 uh, at home. I think this is rarely, unless you're a huge favorite, but 0-0 is rarely a bad result for you uh, in the first game, especially if you were the home team because it means that you take away from the opponent all draws, all possibilities of a draw. So, yeah, so it was a 0-0 for Luhansk, then uh, uh, Timo Werner gave them an early lead. Uh, Luhansk equalized, uh, it was at the half, then it quickly got the lead, uh, then uh, equalized, I think, in the around the 70th, and then a penalty in the last minute secured Leipzig. And we have two Red Bull teams in there, and I want to play that they play against each other in the group stage. I'm not sure if that is possible. They probably will do everything to avoid this. But yeah, that is something I would like to see because it could be farcical. I really think that they will try their best. They are so hard trying now to keep the two teams separate uh, for UEFA. But everyone knows that they are dealing with each other. So uh, I wouldn't want to watch the game, but I want to see such a group. And then, yeah, the game that I saw yesterday, and I only saw the second half, was Star of what used to be Star Bucharest uh, against Rapid uh, Vienna. And at first, it is again the two Austrian teams that were left in European competition. I both dislike and I dislike with a vengeance in the league. And this is why uh, European competition for me is so weird because you actively have to root for teams that you usually root against just because it is beneficial for your team to get a European spot. I said this before and I say it again, it just seems uh, odd. It's for that reason, of course, I have to get myself that Salzburg does well because uh, without Salzburg, Austria's European uh, balance in the last few years would be horrible. It is all Salzburg, and for that, yeah, we have uh, Austria probably will have a fixed qualification spot uh, next year in the Champions League, and that's down to Salzburg. So for that, yes, I give uh, you have to give credit to Salzburg, and you have to be happy that Salzburg is doing this for your team. And I hate Salzburg with a vengeance. I really don't want to win anything. Uh, at least in Austria, in Europe, I got to do it and it feels weird. And the same thing goes yesterday for Rapid. And yeah, um, in German they say Rapid, in English it's a, a Rapid. It's properly pronounced Rapid. Uh, more French spelling. And yeah, um, you gotta root for them in Europe, and I hate this team. I actually think I have more sympathies for Stawa, well, what, again, what used to be Stauer, it's a FCSB. Uh, but you gotta root, root for them, and they had some luck in that game. I, the first game they won 3 1, and yeah, it was comfortable 2 0 lead at the halftime. Uh, Stauer pulled quickly one back, they made it 3 1, and yeah, I think the Stauer coach was a little bit pissed that uh, they lost that high of a mar margin and he thought that they had a better team and uh, 
I did not see the first half, but they got a two nothing lead. And from what I heard on, in the analysis, I saw the second, uh, the first half analysis. Uh, they were overly dominant, but they uh, they took it to repeat the game and got their early goal, which was slightly offside. But uh, they have a French striker with a really imposing physique, and yeah got the early goal and then just before halftime got a very stupid second goal it was deflected and just rolled in but you already could see that their goalkeeper they had to play with the second goalkeeper uh, a whole pulled in one of the worst goalkeeper performances that I've seen in a long time Caballero for Argentina was a masterful goalkeeper compared to that one yes he's 19 and he has a lot to learn and I hope he does learn and why am I saying this? And I don't actually want to spend more time on that game. Uh, in second half, Rapid kind of composed themselves um, and got an even match, maybe even for stretches dominating until the last minute. And I think around the 60th minute, they got the equalizer um, from a free kick that, would, that was deflected wide of the goal. But the goalkeeper saves it, puts it into play. It goes to a Rapid defender who actually makes a mess out of a shot. I mean, he. If you hit hit, it hardly goes straight in the goal, but now uh, it's a soft shot that would have hit the goal and then the defender hit, uh, hit it in. Comically goal. Absolutely comically goal. Uh, if you have a chance to see that goal, I recommend that you watch it. Absolute comedy. And yeah, Stauer, I still call him Stauer, uh, shot themselves in the foot with that one. And yeah, there it goes. 2-1 and then uh, Rapid had a goalkeeper, Shaw had a few chances but so did Rapid and in the end it ended 2-1. Uh, it was an even game I think both both teams, if not Shaw, a little bit more would have deserved to go on. Uh, I'll end this one now, why do I say the team that used to be called Shaw, seemingly the Shaw was the team of the military in Romania, seemingly uh, they got to a private owner and the military sued for the naming rights and the courts gave them the naming rights uh, and the owner didn't, uh, didn't want to pay up or something like that. So he came up with a new name and it's not FCSB for FC Steaua Bucharest, just acronyms. And the weird thing is that UEFA, he had to even get a new crest, which honestly looks like an African uh, coat of arms with uh, I think an eight-pointed star uh, and a red cross on a blue circle really weird looking uh, the extra star logo that I remember was a little bit between Santos and Barcelona somewhere there with a star and yeah uh, now they play the FCSB and UEFA gives them the whole history of star it's a farce absolutely and for such a big name team, the first Eastern European team to win uh, the European Cup in uh, Champions League, uh, I gotta do at some point a history of the European Cup video uh, series like that. That final is one of the greatest results in history, not only because not because of the, how well the game was played. I mean, it was FC Barcelona against uh, Bucharest. Um, played in Sevilla of all places and Barcelona finally should have gotten the win. It ended 0-0 and 2-0 for Stauer on penalties. Just let that sink in. Um, absolute crazy result. Well, I'm curious about the Europa League draw. I'm not as excited, although there are actually quite some uh, teams. Uh, first and foremost, my beloved Milan that are in there that I really want to see how it will go for them qualification wise and yeah I may give you a short reaction on that later on today but we'll see where I go next I have another Jersey video in the evening and yeah maybe I'll pull another three videos a day uh, and I don't know what I will do on the weekend maybe there won't be a video or no well let's see anyway I hope you enjoyed this video let me know what games in the Europa League you watched, uh, if you had any thoughts about anything, if you watched this particular game that I saw, let me know your thoughts, I think it was, uh, yeah. 
lucky result uh, again for Austria. It's good for, but I, part, part of me really wanted to see it a piece try. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you liked that video and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of this. And yeah, I still have a few minutes to go, but I'm gonna listen to some music. Talk to you soon, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.